Hey guys, Yeso here. I'm really excited as today starts the Back 4 Blood Open Beta. Me and my friends here at Esports Arena were really excited when we watched the presentation for Microsoft at E3 this year. Okay, okay. Yeah! Oh! Oh, the Alpha, Alpha ah! was so much fun. Yeah. Oh, dude, it looks good. It looks great. Oh, oh, it's, it's four player? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four oh, player. Well, Let's go, go, boys. And I just wanted to come here today to give you some insight after I was able to get early access to the beta last week. Here's everything you need to know about the Back 4 Blood open beta. Get out of here. Oh, no. He alerted the horde. Run. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. oh what? There's a hole here. <laughs> we both get roasted. Get away from my friends. <laughs> Run. No, 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 no. Oh, the big boy. Oh, my lord. Now, the first thing I want to let you guys know is just how things are going to break down when you first get into the game. There isn't necessarily a traditional menu system for Back for Blood. When you first spawn in, you will land at Fort Hope, which is your landing page for the game. Here you can explore the different systems in the game, head over to the firing range and test out the wide range of weapons that are available to you. Definitely make sure to make use of that. You can play around with the different attachments and get a feel for all of the different weapons and see what you like. Also, here you can check out and go to the menu and see what is available to play. During the open beta, you can do a new versus mode, as well as two different campaigns for the series. Make sure to check out all of these during your time with the open beta. Next up, I want to break down some of the differences you're going to see here in the open beta compared to you Left 4 Dead players from the past. Back in the day, there were different playable characters in Left 4 Dead, but it didn't affect the way the game played for you. Nowadays, there are different cleaners that will have different stats that affect the way you play the game. In the open beta, there are five cleaners available that you can inhabit it. Mom, Walker, Hoffman, Holly, and Evangelo all have different stats to them that affect how you want to play around in the different spaces. The other thing is a card system that affects each different game that you play. Corruption cards affect the Ridden as well as the mutations that you will face and also give you some unique goals for each different playthrough to earn some rewards. You then have your own deck of cards that give you certain buffs, whether it's quicker reload speed, higher damage, more health, and other different advantages. Make sure to play around with this card system before you go into each game to get an idea of the different buffs that you can play around with. Now, one thing you will notice in your playthrough of the game is that the loot system isn't quite the same as it used to be in Left 4 Dead. At the start of each level, there is a shop available that allows you to buy different perks, equipment, weapons, and even attachments for your guns. Now, make sure to play around with this a little bit, get a feel for what's available and the different prices so you can have a bit of an understanding of what you can grab during each level. One thing also to make sure to keep track of is copper. There will be little stashes of copper coins at different points of all of the levels. Gathering these will help you buy more attachments, weapons, and equipment at the end of each level. So make sure to keep track of where all the copper is spawning and grab it all up so you can level up your cleaner throughout every single playthrough. Up next, we obviously have to talk about the zombies. In this game, they are called the Ridden, and then the quote-unquote special infected for this game are called Mutations. There's a range of different mutations you should definitely be keeping an eye out for during all of your games. That list is going to include the Breaker, Bruiser, Crusher, Tallboy, Exploders, Reekers, the Wretch, the Hag, Hawkers, Stalkers, Stingers, Snitches, and the Ogre, as well as the Sleeper. A bunch of different iterations of these enemies, and some of them are smaller changes to the same kind of enemy type. While you won't see the traditional smokers or hunters from the original Left 4 Dead series, I think Turtle Rock has done a great job of hitting a wide range of different skills for these enemy types that'll keep you on your toes throughout your entire playthrough. One thing you do need to make sure you keep an eye out for when you are fighting the mutations is 
each different mutation has specific weak spots on their body that are highlighted by bright pink patches of skin. Hitting these spots will do extra damage and go a long way to protecting you and your fellow cleaners from the mutations. Focus on these weak spots and you will survive a lot longer in all of your playthroughs. Now, one of the biggest differences you will see from Back for Blood compared against Left 4 Dead 2 is the way the multiplayer works. Classic Left 4 Dead 2 saw you playing through the same campaign levels, just with players inhabiting the special infected and trying to get in your way at every step. This time around, you will play in specific arena style maps that will see you starting the round, looting up for weapons and gear, and then fighting waves and waves of Ridden. Enemy players will inhabit mutations and try to kill you as fast as possible. Each team will get the opportunity to play as both the cleaners and the mutations, and wins are based on how long your team survives. Whichever team survives the longest in each specific arena will win the round. Each game is then a best of three. It also has a unique mechanic like we see in Battle Royales where a circle slowly closes in on the cleaners so you have less and less space to work with. It's an interesting take on multiplayer for this kind of game and I'm very curious to see what all of you think of it. Now the final thing to cover here is obviously when does Back for Blood release? The full game will release on October 12th and the best part is if you don't want to pay full price for this title, you're covered. Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscribers will be able to play Back for Blood day one. So make sure to get that subscription and get out there and play. Hope you guys enjoyed and learned something from this video. I'll see you guys out there.